right, guys. Hey, this is Vic from Drop the Spotlight. We're here live with Wayne Baker Brooks. How you doing today, Wayne? All right, man. How are you, man? Uh, just trying to stay warm today. <laughs> yeah, me too, man. It is cold here in Chicago, man. They're calling this Siberia right now. <laughs> <laughs> Get yourself a big old coat with you right now. <laughs> So we're very interested to learning more about you, Wayne. Uh, what inspired you to get into music? Well, um, I was born and raised in, in a blues family. You know, my dad um, it was a blues master here in Chicago. Uh, he first started off <clears throat> playing rock and roll. He had a couple of rock and roll hits in Louisiana and Texas. And um, <clears throat> In the 1950s, you know, he came out with the song The Crawl and Family Rules. Family Rules was his first hit. And um, he uh, packed up and moved to Chicago with Sam Cooke. And then Sam Cooke let him live uh, with his family for like nine months in 1959. And then uh, him and my mom met and uh, they had children. I'm one of the children. And, you know, he changed from the rocker to blues. So all those records were in the house, you know, and, you know, he would be, he would be writing songs. Like my dad was a prolific songwriter uh, and we used to help him write songs, but he would, he would be, you know, writing song or writing songs all day long, man. It, it would be, you know, him, you know, with his guitar, you know, land a track on a reel to reel. And we go to school, he'll be there writing songs. Um, come back home from school, he'll still be there writing songs. My mom making dinner, he's writing songs. We go to sleep, he's writing songs. Mm. So, you know, it it's embedded in us. In fact, he told us that he used to put headphones on my mama's stomach and uh, the music that he would have on the headphones would be like Muddy Waters, Howlin' Wolf, you know, Little Walter, you know, his his favorite Lightning Hopkins, you know. So it's it's really it's really embedded in us, man. So that that's my my main influence is my dad. You know, we used to help him write songs. I, I started off playing drums on pots and pans, helping him write songs, mm -hmm. and um, he would have my brother on the guitar playing the bass lines on the guitar and he'd be like hold that beat right there hold that beat you know and then he'll come up with words and then we'll try to help him with words and and uh it you know to me that was at six years old looking in retrospect those are my first songwriting classes you know and I didn't even know it it was just fun it, he made it so much fun for us that he would use it against us like, you know, if we did something bad or if we had to clean up our room or do our home, go do your homework first and then you can come in here with me, you know, and, and we hurry up and go do our homework and then, you know, get the chance to like, you know, do this with my dad, you know. That's cool. You use that inspiration to, to build on that, you know, that's wild. That's a, a wide variety of, uh, of music genres there. Yeah, yeah. And, 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 you know, growing up, you know, in in the urban, you know, neighborhood, you know, we would get, uh, you know, like George Clinton, you know, uh, Grandmaster Flash and, you know, all the R&B, James Brown, you know, um, you know, everything that was on the radio, you know, from David Boy to, you know, Rolling Stones to, you know, a wide range of musics that we would listen to. Uh, just because we would, you know, in a musical family, we were open to, to music, you know, any kind of music. So those influences, you know, I, I was actually, I uh, went to, uh, when I was in school in the second grade, I was the kid that tried to make all the kids be quiet because I was the DJ. Ooh. So if we were good, if we were good for the day, I get to spin records. You know, at the end, like the last 15 minutes, I get to spin records. And um, I'll never forget, you know, I would bring my dad's albums and I would bring the Sugar Hill Gang albums. So I, I was mixing blues and hip hop like before I started playing it, 
So it was in me before, you know. So uh, yeah, so I would play my dad records and and you know Sugar Hill Gang or whatever that was you know popular at the time. Awesome, that's, that's great to hear. Just growing up with those genres and just mixing and matching it, it it it, it gave you what you're gonna what you're doing today. Absolutely, man. And and you know, I think in retrospect, like man, that was the ground. That was the ground. That was the groundbreaking right there. You know, uh, you know, with my dad. Cause I love writing. That's to me, that's my most favorite thing about music is writing the song and then recording it. And I think that's my strength more than, you know, a singer and a guitar player. A lot of people think, you know, oh, he's, you know, guitar, you know, slash, you know, slasher, you know, but to me, I'm like, man, what about my writing, man? I love to write, man. <laughs> Awesome, awesome. So today uh, you have released a new single titled Izzy's Walls Could Talk. Could you tell us a little bit more yeah. about the the single? Well, it was recorded at Paramount Studios with some buddies of mine um, who hail from Chicago, uh, who started, you know, playing gospel and blues here in Chicago. And then they ventured off to L.A. and like started playing with these big bands, man, like huge bands, like New uh, uh, New Kids on the Block, Lionel Richie, Christina Aguilera, wow. you know, Janet Jackson, um, P. Diddy. Uh, I'm, you know, I, man, I can just go on and on with all of these people that everybody. Um, and um, Beyonce, Destiny Child, you know, I, I can just keep going. They've played with them. They're on these like million selling records. And I mean, they made it. They actually made it. You know, they came out of Chicago and went elsewhere and made it. Similar to what Common had to do, what Kanye had to do. You know, they had to get out of Chicago. And um, so, you know, I reached out to them. I said, hey, man, you know, I, I want to take this musical journey and I want to like start off in Chicago. I want to go to LA, Nashville and New York and just record, you know, with, you know, my friends, you know, whoever lives there. And, and, but the theme of it is I want to show how blues is related to every American genre, you know, because a lot of people don't know or explore blues enough these days. You know, it's hard to get played on the radio. Um, so it, it's like a catch-22. Everybody respect it, but they don't play it. So uh, so here I am in this space, being from the blues, deep embedded in the blues, and having, you know, friends that, uh, you know, like play with the greatest, you know, of all time. Um, how can I get the blues noticed. And I said, the only way I can do it is if I, if I mix the genres and if I call my buddies. And um, I called Ethan Farmer. And uh, Ethan connected me with uh, Rob Lewis, who is actually a vocal producer. Um, and we, man, we went into the studio in LA, the record plant. We, we recorded this track in um, Paramount Studios. And we just, we just recorded all of my songs, man. All the songs that I've written um, that I think that they would be able to um, convey what I was trying to do. So <clears throat> this is the first of the track. Well, well, I'll take that back. I'll take that back. Uh, I did release Tricks Up My Sleeve. Um, and it was on the EP in 2012. Um, but then, you know, of course, you know, as time go by, you start recording, you know, elsewhere and doing other things. And we recorded also here in Chicago too. Um, but it, it, it was a musical journey, man. I wanted to explore all the genres that, you know, blues is related to and put a spotlight on it, just like your show, you know, oh, put yeah. a spotlight, <laughs> you know, for real. It, 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 it was to put a spotlight on blues because, man, I'm going to tell you, you know, the ones who really, really love blues and that's all they listen to, that's all they want to listen to. They're not into, you know, other genres. 
um, you know, they're an older crowd, you know, and as they get older, um, there's a gap between fans from the real blues lovers and the younger crowd who know nothing about blues. And that's what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to close that gap to where, you know, if, if I could find some fans that like what I'm doing, they can grow with me and grow with the blues so I could show a spotlight on other artists that's similar to what I'm doing so they could, you know, get the love as well and have fans and we'll have a, 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 a younger and a newer fan base. So that's, that's the goal of that song. So um, the song was written by um, myself, the music, and I, you know, always loved writing with Bruce McKay. Bruce McKay wrote the song Lie to Me for Johnny Lang. Oh, wow. And Johnny Lang is like, you know, this huge, you know, he came from blues too. Um, he's like this blue, uh, blues pop, you know, artist star, you know, um, rock. And, you know, he's really, really talented. He can sing his butt off. And, uh, you know, we would tour together. You know, I remember, you know, meeting him in Nash. I mean, uh, Memphis, where my dad was recording his song. And this 14-year-old kid come running up to me. Hey, Mr. Brooks, Mr. Brooks. Hey, man, I just want to let you know that I love you and your family and, and you know, your dad and your brother. And, you know, they're great. And and uh, and he's like, my name's Johnny Lane. I'm right, you know, I'm performing, uh, I'm recording my first album here in Nashville. And I'm like, your first album, you're 14? I said, man, you must be really good. And, you know, the friendship started from there. But he had this guy um, named Bruce McKay that played keyboards with him that wrote Lie to Me. And that was his first big hit. And we would tour together. We would do gigs together. And, and after my set one time, before after uh, my set, Johnny went on. And uh, Bruce came up to me, he was like, man, Wayne, that set was so good, man. He said, I got to write you a hit now, man. And we became friends from that, from that point on. So I would go to his house in Minneapolis and it would literally be like a therapy session. Um, I would, he would greet me, would come in. It was like a psychologist, man. It was, you know, when I think about it and he's like, all right, man, what, you know, what, what do you want to, you know, what do you want to write? And, you know, I'm like, man, I just, you know, want to like get all these songs that I got in my head. He said, so he said, you know, what's going on, man? How, how are you? You know? And, and he would ask me all these questions and he would write stuff down. And, and then, you know, it turned into a song, you know, um, this particular song, you know, I was telling him about how I was in this bad relationship. And I mean, it, it, it just constantly, you know, going back and forth, you know. And um, I told him that I had met a, another young lady. <laughs> so I told him everything. And then he said, man, if these walls could talk, I said, there it is right there. <laughs> there it is right there. And we, and, and we just went there. We just went there. He was like, all right. Let's not focus on the bad relationship. Let's focus on the good relationship that you have. The one that you're in, which, you know, uh, recently um, Jada Pinkett Smith said something about an entanglement. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, entanglement, you know, th that's exactly what it is. But he said, let's not focus on the bad stuff. Let's focus on the good stuff. Let's talk about that. And we just went from that and he wrote the lyrics and I wrote the music and we laid the track down. Wow. That's a, that's a fantastic story. You know, like it, you could, like a, when I was listening to the music, I was like, man, I could feel this music. I could feel the emotion going through the artist, the performer of what they are going through. And these are types of songs that people don't hear these days because there's, it's emotionless. And yet this song had that emotion that made you, and you know like, what? When you say that, uh, when we were recording this, the studio people were giving me hugs out of the blue, you know, just like real tight hugs, like, Wayne, thank you. And I'm like, you know, no, thank you. You know, they're like, no, thank you, man. 
we get people pushing buttons here all day long, you know, getting beats. You got a band. This is what we got in the music for, was to hear people like you do this. You're like a rare breed right now. So whatever you want us to do, we'll help you with it. And man, that felt so good, you know, um, that, you know, that the music that I was writing, like, made these people feel something like, hey, man, this is why I got into music. When he said that, I was like, whoa, okay. All right, I must be on the right track then. But then again, you know, anybody in the desert that need water, <laughs> when they get the water, <laughs> they're like, yeah. <laughs> but um, but that that's exactly, you know, the the sentiment that I got from that was, and, and, you know, I was thinking, man, you know, most the, the music, when I wrote the, the music to it, I, I had it in my brain. It was always a feel of, um, it was a feel of like Arthur Connolly. I don't know if you've ever heard of Arthur Connolly. He was a great soul singer. You know, Al Green. You know, I was in, in that type of mood. You know, so the soul, the flavor of the soul comes from there because that's how I was feeling when I wrote. But then, you know, when I listen to the to the chord progression, it's like, man, this is like, you know, some Bob Dylan. <laughs> this is some Bob Dylan with like, you know, chord progression like. So it's like all of these flavors wrapped into one. But at the same time, the whole journey is to show how this is related to blues. That's why I dedicated the solos to like a B.B. King type of uh, feel to it. So so anytime you put any B.B. in it, you know it's blues. Yes, yes. And that, that's, that's amazing and that's astounding because that's, you put all those elements in there and it gave like the perfect recipe for a song and and fans are going to really like it. They're going to really enjoy it. And I feel like what you said, it's going to be an introduction for new fans for blues. And then they're going to want to, I want to hear more. I want to hear more. So because of the fans wanting to hear more, Wayne, where can our fans find you on social media to keep in touch? And maybe if you're sharing something on social media, maybe that's a new artist that they could find and help them quench their thirst. Absolutely. Um, on Instagram, my Instagram is Wayne Baker Brooks. Uh, Facebook page is uh, facebook.com slash Wayne Baker Brooks Music. Um, my website is waynebakerbrooks.com and um, wbb.band. Um, that, that leads you to my website, but it also leads you to the other singles like uh, If These Walls Could Talk would be wbb.band slash walls. So I'm trying to make it easy as possible for people <laughs> to remember. So it's my initials, wbb.band slash walls. That's where they can find all the information on where to stream, Spotify, um, Apple Music. Uh, they can buy the track, which would be nice for an independent like myself. Uh, if they actually bought the track, that would help out a lot. Um <clears throat> And I mean, I'm I'm on all the platforms except for TikTok. I, I had got on TikTok, <laughs> and I really don't know what to do on TikTok, you know. Uh, so I put like the the six standing ovation that I got in France. It was like throughout the set, and like it was like the sixth one, and they wouldn't stop clapping, and Whoa. you know, they just wouldn't stop. So I'm like, all right, I'm gonna film this, man. This, the people ain't gonna believe this. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I filmed it and I put it on TikTok, and I got like eight people liking it, and they followed me right away. And then I, I know with social media, you have. To, I'm learning this now that you have to, you know, be consistent and mm -hmm. constantly put stuff up. And I'm, you know, I'm like, man, I'm not, you know, that person, you know, but if in this day, if I want to like continue to doing what I'm doing, I'm going to have to do it. So eventually I'm going to do something and I'm going to do something wild on TikTok. <laughs> 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 I might do like a, like a, one of these dances or something. <laughs> 
Well, fans like that. So the, the interaction, the scene, the, 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 your personality, people love that. So I will be sure to make sure you put your social media links in the, in the article for the video, as well as the, the description, the video we're going to upload it to. So the fans will have an access there too. So you can click it. I'm like, where's this little dance I'm hearing about? <laughs> 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 well Wayne thank you so much for the interview guys and gals check out the new track if these walls can talk listen embrace and just visualize the song in your mind the music the soundtrack to a situation where you could just close your eyes and just press play and just be there it's, yeah, it's great for it's great for Valentine's Day oh yes it uh. is yeah, and that's that's in a couple of days. But this weekend, you know, it's, it's a great song to slow dance to. The one that you love, you can cuddle up with, you know. And that that that's a, a, a another purpose of the song too, is to make people feel something, you know. So thank you for that. Ah, uh, no problem, y'all guys. Have a great day. We'll see you at the cons. <laughs>